Hello, Jess Sugood here with the LEGO Creator Pirate Ship from 2020. This has 1,264 pieces, four minifigures if you count the skeleton, and it retails for $100 in the United States. Now I'm going to take a look at all three builds, starting with the Pirate Ship. But first we have the minifigures, and the minifigures accessories change throughout the builds. I'll try to point them out when I can, but for this Pirate Ship build, we have the Pirate Captain. He has a torch as well as a sword. This torso is actually exclusive to the set. The only exclusive print to the set from my understanding. Uncommon face print though. Not too much else to point out with the pirate captain. Next minifigure is a crewmate. Nothing too interesting to point out aside from I guess the new bandana piece which at this point isn't exactly new. Same with that torso print which has appeared in sets since 2015. Not super common but just because there's not a lot of pirate sets since 2015. And here's the last of the crewmates, torso print that's actually common since 2009, face print that's, eh, it's been a few sets, not super common, but that's it for the alive figures. But we do have a dead skeleton dude, which <laughs> would be cool to have those wobbly arms like the OG skeletons from LEGO. Anyways, for the pirate ship build, we have the pirate ship itself, but also some side builds as well, which we'll take a look at the ship first. So the first build is the pirate ship. This design being one of the few, if not one of the only pirate ships of this size in Lego that has been entirely brick built. The hull down here is brick built. The sails up here are brick built. It's very impressive seeing all those plates and bricks come together. Let's take a close up starting with the front. At the very front, we have this sail as well as a figurehead. The figurehead is a very interesting build where we have a brick built mermaid. Love the part usage here where it's a lot of unconventional pieces that I wouldn't expect for a mermaid build. Of course, this isn't a minifigure, so recreating all those with regular plates and even some pole connections is really interesting. Oh, gotta put that back on. Anyways, finishing up with the front, this part is a Technic pin connection. Also, there's an anchor mechanism, twisting it this way, fires the anchor, twisting it the other way, lowers the anchor. I love how they did the railing with these macaroni tile pieces, as well as those pearl gold cone pieces. And there's enough space to fit some minifigures standing in front there. And with the brick built sails, this one at the front has that skull design, which I really love how they interpreted the crossbones look using some tile and plate pieces that came out very, very well. Also, these parts at the bottom are connected via some clip connections. And if you're wondering how this is connected, that sail is just clipped on and then this part is Technic pin connected. This allows for some nice movement with the sails side to side. And then at the very top, we have a little crow's nest. You have enough space to fit one minifigure standing up where there is this flag clipped on as well. But either way, moving on to the main deck of the ship, there's unfortunately no covering for the main cannon area. It's just an open interior and I don't really like that. I mean, there's enough space to have minifigures standing inside there. Just by removing the cannons, we'll get a little bit more space. And the set includes two cannon builds, which use these small wheels, which makes it very easy to push around. If you guys don't know how these cannons work, you load them with the cylinder ammunition which they also give these barrels to hold some extra ammunition in the set. And either way, you load it to the front of the cannon. Pulling back this part, you can shoot out the cylinder piece. There you go, it shot so fast, it just shot against my hand. And now I'm gonna lose it forever. Let's just give it one really good shot. Ooh, came right back to me. But of course, by having the cannons inside there, you can open up these flaps and push the cannons through those holes. And that looks pretty neat as well. As for the second set of sails, well, this design is similar to the one with the crossbones, except it doesn't have the crossbones. Same with this bottom set as well. Nothing too much to note with that one, and the top of this part doesn't have a crow's nest. And then at the back, we have the captain's cabin, which is another really awesome build. Identical on both sides. You can access the interior of the cabin by moving those walls, which are on a hinge connection. And you could also access it by moving the ceiling. Just pull on the ship wheel at the roof. Inside, we just have a little seat, a map on a printed two by two, which is nothing new, a goblet, and that's about it. I also like the doorway and staircase at the front of the cabin. 
Taking the staircase to the very top, like I showed before, there's the ship wheel and a lot of standing space. And the very back of the ship looks just as beautiful with some nice pearl gold details. Also the rudder at the bottom of the ship, which is clipped on. And you can see these lanterns, which <laughs> did fall off earlier in the review. But there's more build to this one with this shark. The shark is actually really well built using only brick pieces. Well, not specialized pieces is my point. Like none of the big shark pieces. We have a printed one by one eye right here. Also a mini ball joint mouth, which the bottom jaw you can move around. The tail also has a miniature ball joint so you can move that around. I don't like how easily it comes off when you move it around because that's happened a lot in these close-ups. Also the little fins which you can move around as well. Not too much else to show with the shark. Very cool build in my opinion. There's a treasure chest as well, which has some gold inside. And I love this blue jay build, which is very simple, but uses the right pieces to illustrate that animal very well. I think this and the shark are actually the best brick built animals of the set, not just the shark. <laughs> but either way, that's it for the pirate ship build. Now let's move on to the next one. Our next build is a Skull Island, which has two vehicles and then the main island. Skull Islands are something we associate with LEGO Pirates. There's been a lot of Skull Island sets, even with the most recent Pirates line, 2015, getting that $20 one, which was really cute. This, however, even if it's not the dedicated build of the set, might be the strongest Skull Island we've gotten from LEGO before. This is all built up on a couple plates, not like a base plate or anything like the old LEGO Pirates. And it's kind of interesting that they chose the edges to be a white, almost having that foam in the water. It actually works. I haven't seen that used. Usually you expect maybe like some blues as the plates at the bottom. But with unconventional build techniques, what takes a cake is the skull. This design looks fantastic. A lot of nice unconventional part usage with the sloped or curved pieces clipped on there. Those are used for the banners or the sails of the ship. Here it's used for that eye socket area or whatever you want to call that part of a skull. You guys could see I got an A in anatomy. <laughs> Love that usage. Wouldn't expect that. Around here too for the nose area. That's really cool. Just aligning all that up using some clipped pieces. Again, very detailed for this not being the main build of the set. There's even a little play feature where by twisting this part here, you can lift up the skull, which is actually pretty cool. It resets back into its position as you twist it all the way around. I will say the only part that looked kind of odd on the skull is the top where there's these gaps and a lot of black and even some gray. Doesn't look too bad from looking at the front though. But by lifting that part up with that mechanism, we have the treasure chest inside. You can lift it open and there's some gems where we have a green jewel as well as a red maybe a ruby and an emerald, and then a golden goblet there. Unfortunately, just the flat pearl gold. You can see some more gold jewels represented by one by one studs inside the Skull Island. So you can move it back here if you'd like, but there's a lot of open two by two jumpers in this back area. I just kind of wish they had more treasure chests in this set. I mean, can pirates have enough treasure? <laughs> Would have been easy to add to the other builds too, but it really isn't too big of a deal. All around the island, there's plates on top of those plates to just kind of have some overgrowth detailing, which looks really cool. And one of the most interesting parts of this build is this monkey right here. <laughs> it's a really, really funny build. I don't think it quite works because if you put it next to a Lego minifigure, the shark works, but this just, it just looks way too primitive. No pun intended, like not, no, no, no. I don't think it works. But you know, that's the joy of Creator where they do make some weird brick builds of animals and stuff using some very common pieces. It just kind of shows the creativity of the set, no big deal. In this corner over here, we have a little spot for our skeleton. There's even this coconut tree hanging from the side, which you can adjust up and down if you'd like. Not too much else going on with this build. But we still have the vehicles with this build and this one is a little boat. I really like this, where we usually expect that single boat piece. This is brick built using some studs not on top techniques I really appreciate. There's enough space inside to fit a couple minifigures, and we even have that treasure map at the end here. Also, there's a lantern which you could move up and down, as well as a little weapon rack at the back. Very good build for a small little boat. The same could be said with this little raft right here, which is another fantastic build of its size. I like the detailing with the sail at the front, which you can adjust around. Also what I believe is a paddle, which you can move up and down. You have enough space to fit a couple minifigures on there. 
very detailed for the size they have, which I appreciate. But that's it for the Skull Island build. Let's move on to the final one. Then there's the Rustic Pirate Inn, and this design has a little carriage at the side, which we'll take a look at in a bit. But the Rustic Pirate Inn itself, I actually really like the shaping and overall look of it. Doesn't really look like too many other Lego sets. If anything, it reminds me of the London Escape Lego Pirates of the Caribbean set, where we did kind of get a little bit of an inn, or was it like a little pub and a side carriage build. But even then, this is so much better than the build in that set. Now, if we look at the exterior first, the biggest change with the figures, in my opinion, that's the most interesting is the accordion build here. I really like how that came out as a fan of accordions. Anyways, to the left, we have this winch here, which you could spin around, also raise and lower, which just has a very simple chain technique to get that done. And then to the right, we have a water wheel. This design is actually really cool on how this comes together, where they use some of those new-ish corner kind of curved tile pieces. Also some one by two jumpers and cylinder pieces. You could spin that even easier by looking at the interior, pushing this part right here. That's really fun to play around with. And on that interior, I do say the first floor is a bit vacant, a little bit more vacant than I would like. But to this side right here, I kind of like the detailing with, it looks like a little seating area, also a staircase to that second floor. And the second floor has three different beds as well as a little pistol on the wall. It's a bit hard to see, but there's a two by two print of a map. From my understanding, that's not a new piece. And we also have lots of these window designs, which actually give us a lot of these window panels with the square design that's fairly new. I like getting that. And if you look at the ceiling here, I actually really like how they built this uh, or, or use these archway pieces where it almost looks like planks and wooden parts kind of keeping up the roof structure, which, yeah, technically it is with those Lego bricks, but it's just some cool detailing. So I do wish they had these bumper pieces another color because the blue kind of bleeds through. The roof can be lifted up and down where you could get a better look at those archway pieces. And there's some more details on the front exterior that I didn't really get to cover. I just kind of like how all these colors come together at the front there. Also like this sign right here from my understanding. At the very top ceiling, there's a build for a bird and we also have a crow's nest up here, which is pretty cool to have on an inn something you associate more with Lego pirate ships. I do like this little connection to the crow's nest, which connects to this cloth-like design. Well, it's just one of those little panel pieces, but it works really well and it just kind of pops out. One of my favorite parts of this build. And then finally on this side of the building, we do have a small area where you could hide that treasure chest. Just open up this flap right here and slide the treasure chest inside. I think that's pretty cool. Also some more details at the side here. As for the build of the carriage with the horse, well, let's put that treasure chest back on there. If you're wondering, the treasure chest itself has some jewels and gold inside, but I do like how this doesn't use, you know, like a molded horse piece or a specific wheel pieces. It's just a four by four round plate. It's very basic, but it works. It doesn't work with other Lego sets, but it works in this setting because the build of this doesn't really look like too many other sets either. So it's a more complex styling than something like Lego City. It's a little bit less modern than something like some other themes, but I like it a lot. You could detach the horse if you'd like as well, but. It has those little clips at the side, which make it look a little weird. And if you really want, you could move the feet individually or the legs. That's just fun. <laughs> but it seems like this back part fell off, so be careful with that. Either way, that is it for the build of the set. Let's take a look at the packaging and then the final verdict. The box for this is a big old box because, well, it is a very pricey set, which shows the different builds at the back of the box. Two instruction booklets for the set. This one just has Skull Island, and this one has these two builds to it. This is a big boy right here. Are there any interesting ads? Well, we have a Rebuild the World ad with a dog pooper scooper, and also an ad with some of the other sets from this year. So overall, I think this is a fantastic three-in-one. The more expensive the three-in-ones, the better they get. This one captures something that's beloved in LEGO lore, which is pirate ships. And we've gotten so many pirate ships, and yet this one feels so fresh. The closest one I could think of to this is the Metal Beard Sea Cow set. That had a very steampunk look. This has that classic pirates archetype -y look you would you would expect in your mind when you think of a pirate ship. And it still has a very unique style to it, having that brick built feel for the hull and the sails. I didn't think those could work. I didn't think plates would come together so well as it did in this set. And I'm very happy with how it looks. I think the value is there at $100. If I had to give a complaint with the value though, I think it's low on figures. They should have had a full crew of pirates. 
Also, I wish that you could cover up the cannon part in the middle. That's about my only two gripes because I think the other two builds for the alternate builds are very, very good and I don't have much gripes there. But with all things considered, I'd rate this one an A. I think this is one of the best crater sets in a while. It's a fantastic deal at $100 where you get some fantastic builds, some great pieces if you're just looking at it for the value alone, though it is a little bit low on minifigures. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and which one of these three builds is your favorite. I think mine is easily the pirate ship, but the other two still rock. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.